This video is brought to you by AliExpress, where you can find a fantastic and wide range of electronics and other goods at great prices. AliExpress has sent me over a Huawei Hero Air laptop, which is powered by an Intel Celeron processor. It weighs a shade over 900 grams, and it's perfect for taking to class or work to take notes, or as a secondary spare laptop in your home for browsing the web or watching Netflix. It comes preloaded with Windows 10, which is, of course, upgradable to Windows 11, and has a user accessible M.2 slot, USB 3, mini HDMI, and a micro SD slot too. AliExpress is soon to be running their global shopping festival, which is a big sale where you can get great discounts on this laptop and up to 70% off of other products on AliExpress if you use the coupon code on screen right now or in the video description. You can find links to the Huawei laptop or their official store also in the video description and of course AliExpress, where the global shopping festival sale will come to an end in March 2022. Once again, thanks very much to AliExpress for sponsoring the video and of course, thank you for listening. Let's get back into the video. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. We have some news which is gonna make AMD hopping mad. Yeah, that pun wasn't good, but it is a very interesting piece of news because there is actually a simulated GPU which has appeared in an NVIDIA research white paper. We'll discuss it further in a moment in terms of the specifications, but it's really interesting because it is quite likely to be a research paper kind of hinting what the capabilities of NVIDIA's Hopper architecture is capable of. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, we are currently on RTX 30, which is Ampere. And we know that after Ampere, there is of course Lovelace, and then after that, there will be Hopper. To my knowledge, it's gonna be quite interesting because Lovelace is going to release for gamers, but not long after Lovelace launches, we should see Hopper for the data center. And to my knowledge, again, what I'm hearing from some of my sources, Hopper for the data center and Hopper for the you know desktop for gamers is going to differ quite a bit. And this is not anything unique to the Hopper architecture. We've seen this occur with even Ampere itself. Like there is some fundamental differences between the HPC version, and also what we have for gaming, including, of course, a different process and manufacturer of the GPU itself. So I'm not too surprised that NVIDIA are going two different directions here. I'm hearing, for example, one difference could be that we actually have just different memory types with Hopper, of course, most likely using a HBM for the data center and traditional memory for gamers. But anyway, what is quite interesting about Hopper is that I've been hearing for a while, I've mentioned it in a couple of videos, that the performance of the GPU is really good, but it is really impressive when it comes to AI calculations. Furthermore, and this has been pretty well established at this point, this GPU is going to be based on an MCM design. And it, this is going to be very important for NVIDIA going forward because at the end of the day, AMD have a jump on them when it comes to MCM. Uh, CDNA 2, of course, has already been disclosed by AMD, and we know that that is obviously MCM, RDNA 3 is going to be. So it's going to be very interesting to see how NVIDIA move forward with this. And again, they will be utilizing TSMC's 5NM process. So there is a lot of room for NVIDIA to kind of make a lot of strides. But let's discuss these very interesting findings. So to give you a quick overview, this mysterious, this this ether of a GPU, <laughs> maybe I'm slightly overselling it, but it is known as a GPU-N. Now, the possibility is that this is a part of the GH, excuse me, 100. I'll discuss the part in just a moment. Now, it seems to be outfitted with 134 SMs with a grand total of 8,576 cores with 2.68 terabytes per second of bandwidth. And we also have some benchmarks as well. Now, these benchmarks are extremely impressive. In fact, and yeah, they are quite early performance numbers. And obviously, they're not talking about frame rates, but they're basically saying that the performance of this GPU, which I'm going to be referring to as the GH100 or GPU N, is about 24.2 teflops of FP32 performance. So that's an increase of 24% over the A100. It's got 779 teflops. I'm going to repeat that number because it's just quite astronomical 779 teflops of FP16 performance, which is about a two and a half times increase over A100. 
Now, it does appear to me like they are not actually testing the full capacity of this GPU. There is most likely some SMs disabled, but furthermore, it doesn't seem like it's operating in an MCM kind of fashion. It seems like it's only a single tile to use Intel's terminology or only a single chiplet for AMD um, terminology. You guys get the idea. So it's definitely not operating at its full capacity, but it is a really great indicator of what NVIDIA have going forward. The rumor is that it's going to be about three times faster than what NVIDIA's current architecture is. That is, of course, one chip versus another chip. And obviously, again, I want to stress that they can put several of these together. And NVIDIA have actually been quite blunt about their, you know, their desire to do this. There was like a research paper, I think it was like 2018 or 2019, I can't quite remember. But they also released, you know, a research paper back then of the intriguing possibilities of kind of having multiple chips together and how they could create a... You know, it, it, back then, of course, it was a simulated design, a simulated design um, which was much more powerful than their top of the range models at the time. So it's going to be very interesting to me how Intel uh, and AMD and NVIDIA kind of differ in their designs going forward. You know, from everything I understand, Intel are going to be iterating on their GPUs really fast. I'm hearing that it could be less, and I've mentioned this a couple of times already, it could be less than a year. Like, I'm hearing almost nine-ish months after ARC Generation 1 releases that we're going to get the second generation. So, basically, there's definitely an arms race going forward. And we're also seeing quite similar things for AMD as well and Intel in terms of CPUs with, obviously... Both of them just cranking out architectures left and right. And I have to say that in that arms race anyway, AMD have definitely been quite ahead. Speaking of AMD, there was also a very interesting interview that Anthony Lever, I'll link his video in, of course, the description of this one, has had with AMD, where Mark Papermaster basically confirms that AMD will be revealing some key details of the Zen 4 microprocessor architecture. And this is going to be, of course, at their CES 2022 event. Now, to my understanding, this event is going to be a really good, like AMD are going to be going all out. However, you know, even in the interview itself, Mark does mention that the primary focus of their CPUs anyway is going to be the Ryzen Vcache CPUs. And obviously, you know, Ryzen Vcache, it's a very interesting set of processors because, you know, the IPC gains, and I've, you know, I'm sure most of you would agree, it's pretty much on par with a generational leap. And all they've basically done, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, but they've basically just bolted a crap ton of cache on the processors. Well, obviously, depending on the configuration, it's like 64 megabytes per CCX, though. So it's really interesting that um, we're going to get some Zen 4 information. I'm curious to see what they actually do disclose. I'm hoping that we get some IPC information because that would be great to get some official confirmation. You know, I've been hearing it could be up to 40% improvement in performance. However, to my understanding, that is also including clock frequency gains as well. And I've also had some mixed information of whether that's over Zen 3 or whether that's Zen 3 Vcache. I'm thinking it's probably over Zen 3, not the Vcache, because that would be absolutely crazy. And of course, the thing about performance gains, as pretty much everyone on the planet knows, it's really dependent on the application. And obviously, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> applications can vary wildly. However, to my understanding anyway, it's the one T performance, so basically single thread. So that's even perhaps more nuts because AMD's single thread performance was definitely, I wouldn't say lackluster with Zen 1, but it wasn't on par with what Intel had with Skylake. And that was definitely Intel's saving grace at the time with, you know, the 6700 or 7700K if you're running, say, you know, games for example which really put especially back then a lot of work on just one or two threads but now amd have definitely moved a lot ahead here so it's going to be curious to see what they do disclose just across the board and also a small update concerning amd's next generation of thread rippers or should i say thread ripper 5000 Pros. Basically, we've now had a leak that has confirmed their existence. There is also a rumor that it's going to appear at CES. I think most of us would agree that they're a little late to the game at this point, 
But yeah, I mean, Fred Ripper isn't going anywhere. To my understanding, AMD are going to continue to push them out for each generation of processors. And I'm hearing that, you know, we're going to see them Zen 4 as well as Zen 5. I don't have any technical details, but apparently that they are a thing. So it's going to be interesting to see how uh, Intel responds to that because, I mean... <sighs> It wasn't too long ago that the shoe, I know it's a really crappy saying, but the shoe was definitely on another foot, where AMD basically just did not have any real answer to Intel's HEDT offerings, and now it's like, Mama is spanking uh, Intel's HEDT offerings, like they just don't really have any answer to the current generation of Fred Ripper processors, like it's kind of ridiculous. Um, and yeah, you know... Fred Ripper, it's not just the core count, that's the thing, like, if it was just the core count, Intel could kind of have a few wins here or there, but it's not, it's like, it's everything, it's the, you know, multi-thread performance obviously comes from core count, but then you've got other things like just, you know, memory and the, the I.O. for the love of God, like, it's just, it's crazy the amount of PCIe lanes and stuff that AMD have managed to cram into those boards, and yeah, okay, it's quite expensive, but you know, 3D artists, video editors, especially if you're dealing with like, you know, 4 or 8K footage, there are a ton of people I know that are really happy with those things. And it's quite interesting to see how, um, you know, movie makers, especially amateur movie makers, are really loving those things because obviously you can iterate so quickly. Anyway, I'm slightly rambling on that. I'm going to go through one final news story because I find this one absolutely just kind of mind-boggling. Remember how everyone, when the PlayStation 5 launched and everyone was talking about just how fast the SSD is and obviously at 5.5 gigabytes per second, it's certainly no slouch. Clearly with PCIe Gen 4, we've also got ridiculously fast drives available on the PC as well, you know, 7 gigabytes per second plus. But A data, while they are bringing their A game, oh my god, it is really the video of bad puns. I'm sorry, guys. But yeah, they're showing off an NVMe PCIe Gen 5 drive, and it is actually kind of nuts. Um, it is capable of 14 gigabytes per second sequential reads, and courtesy of, of course, the company for this disclosure. I mean, it doesn't look anything special at the end of the day. It doesn't have like you know a kettle bolted to it it doesn't make you coffee in the morning i'd personally really love it if it made me coffee and pancakes in the morning just saying guys if you could put that into a nvme drive that would be pretty spiffy but yeah i mean this thing is going to be absolutely blazing fast and uh well i guess we're kind of moving on to the next generation right Anyways, with that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, well, the normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe. I know it is a couple of days before Christmas, but I'm going to regularly say it now in videos of, you know, happy Christmas to everyone because, you know, maybe you guys are going away for the holidays. This will be the last video you see for a couple of days. So if it is, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever you want to say. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.